What a matchup this is looking like it's going to be. This guy's squad looks very filthy, man. Has a couple 99 overalls. Uh, his Diamond Dynasty player, Mike Trout. Dawson and David Wright, man. Also has Ernie Banks on the squad, too. Haven't really seen Ernie Banks that much in ranked season. So here he is. He will be making an appearance in this game. There is going to be two videos posted. The second video that will be posted in a couple hours after this one, I'm hoping, is going to be a pack opening. And that's going to be the first ever live reaction pack opening on this damn channel so you are going to want to tune into that and i'm not going to spoil anything but there was definitely flames 100 percent, man i'm not going to spoil anything at all but you should definitely tune into that first live reaction pack opening on this channel will take place and it was it was a big one too it was a big pack opening so yeah definitely tune into that uh later tonight at some point and if you're wondering where the hell are the live commentaries for the games, I'm probably going to play a game or two tonight. I'll try and get two in, I'll, and those will uh, most likely be posted tomorrow if I am able to get two in. I'll, I'm definitely going to try and get one game in where I do a live commentary, but yeah, I'm just hopefully that's the case, man, because I know a lot of people enjoy the live commentaries. I know a lot of people enjoy the post commentaries. Right now, I feel like I'm stuck in between because it seems like it's half and half. Literally, man, it's honest to God, half and half, like, more, people, half the, yeah, half the fucking people would rather see live commentaries, and half the people would rather see post commentaries, but a good amount of people, um, I don't know, man, it's alright, man, I will definitely do some live commentaries 100%, and there's gonna be a couple games played tonight, I am hoping, but this is, you know, this is just what is, uh, what I'm comfortable doing right now, these post commentaries, I feel like they're more entertaining to do, these live commentaries, I did, I was just a sketch bag, and wasn't really able to uh, to be myself pretty much. I was just be <laughs> it was just it was just awkward, man. Because yeah, those are the first live commentaries I ever did. So I was just sitting there like, what the fuck should I even say? And half the time when I'm playing these games, I don't even say anything, and I forgot half the time that I that I was even doing a live commentary. But yeah, th th there's gonna be two games posted or two games played tonight, and they will most likely be posted tomorrow at some point. So if you're wondering that, there is the answer. So I had Hershiser taking the mound. This guy responded back with Cindergard, and I don't think I mentioned this yet in any of my videos that I did get the diamond Fernando Rodney which I'm I'm sure everyone obviously knows by now seeing the title and the thumbnail but yeah he is on the squad and I needed to pick him up man he was 100% my favorite uh, closer to use in 16 he was he was the most dominant he, he may have been the most dominant pitcher in that game man like the circle change was absolutely disgusting that is the only word to describe that pitch was disgusting. And then, you know, he could also throw like 98, 99 on the gun. Also had a slider too. It's like that, that card was almost unhittable, if you ask me. But who knows, man. Some, some of the pitchers in this game are very hittable. Then, you know, they were pretty much unstoppable in 16. Like I thought Kelvin Herrera was pretty damn solid in 16. And then in this game, he hasn't been so solid so far. But as I'm talking about pitchers in this game... The offense was getting off to a good start. I was able to take an early lead in the first inning, and then now we're in the second inning. This guy isn't able to get the force out at second base because he probably wouldn't have been able to get Lofton no chance at all on the double place. Now, the bases are juiced for Brantley, and I'm not wasting any damn time, man. First pitch swinging. He's leaving a sinker over the middle of the plate, down by the knees, and I'm cashing in three runs. Brantley gets the... Stand up triple in the process. So that's that's exactly how you want to start off this game offensively, man. This guy responded back too. After I got that first run, this guy responded back. Got a run on the board. And now that Brantley is on third base, Hanley is first pitch swinging too. So, man, you're going to be lobbing in these fastballs and sinkers first pitch. Why not tee off on them? So I'm going up 5-1 in this game. But no, not even close to safe, man. Like I was saying too, I wanted to put uh, Rodney in this game relatively early like I didn't want Hershiser to go the distance unless there was like a no hitter or a perfect game going obviously but it seemed like this guy was making a lot of good swings he responds back too with a base hit after the previous single and he's cashing in his second run of this game so it is now 5-2 so I'm pretty sure after that I got Rodney warming up in the pen although it is only the top of the third inning man it was just I don't know this guy was just teeing off on me this guy was sending stuff down the line, finding holes, and he was just getting a lot of base hits or just making, you know, good swings to begin this game too. So Rodney, I need Rodney to come in in this game and do something. And when I say I need Rodney, I 100% need Rodney, man, because the only reliever 
slash closing pitcher who isn't gassed completely pretty much in the pen is Rodney and Wade Davis. And I, I'm not, you know, I don't really don't like using Wade Davis that much because I feel like a lot of people just go to town on Wade Davis. So I didn't really want to use Davis in this game. So if Rodney was going to make an appearance, he would have to get the job done for a good amount of innings. He has a guy on third and first with Seager up at the plate. I'm getting him looking on the high sinker. So thank God. He wasn't able to get any more runs in, although he did get one back, so it is 5-2. Eddie Matthews is off the bench because that was it for Hershiser, like I was saying. This guy was doing a really good job. This guy really didn't want to go to the pen, I guess, that much because, you know, I was doing all right against Syndergaard to begin this game. He didn't even have the, the pen warming up, I don't think. So Eddie Matthews, man, I'm probably going to put him back at third base uh, sometime in the near future. Just been putting Molitor there because I want to get a good mix of lefties and righties because lately it's been, I've been using a lot of lefties in my lineup. Like all the players I've been picking up lately have all been lefties. I don't want to stack my lineup with lefties because if you do end up facing a lefty on the mound, you're going to be screwed pretty much or maybe not, who knows. But in, anyway, I'm just trying to get a good mix of players. So now in the fourth inning, or actually, this is the fifth inning. Now in the fifth inning, Rodney is inserted, man. So they changed his delivery a little bit in this game, which I'm not really, you know, I'm not really going to say if I like it or not yet. I'm going to have to pitch with him a couple games, 100%. But even though that they changed, like, the pitching a little bit lately where they make it more slow when you're about to throw the ball, I guess that can be annoying a little bit. But they did change his delivery a little bit. I'm getting the second guy swinging for the, for the K right there. So... You know when Rodney's going to come in these games, he's definitely going to get a good amount of strikeouts. So I do get the next guy looking too. So Rodney comes in in the fifth and completely shuts the door, getting two Ks in the process fairly quick inning as well. So Rodney was going to have to pitch till around like the eighth inning at least, man, because, you know, like I do have a three-run lead, but, you know, he's probably going to run out of gas before the ninth inning rolls around unless I can get really quick innings or something. So... I mean, I was able to get the base hit to begin this, and they're not really sure what the hell this guy was doing up there in center field. It should have been caught, but I do get the single, and then Molitor is up next, sending a missile to short, but he makes the play, gets the out at second base, so that ends that inning. So Dawson is up to begin this inning, and Rodney does throw heat, man. He throws that, like, 99. He can probably even reach 90. Did I say 99? Yeah, you, th you probably reach 99 on the gun if you rear back and get a good one in, obviously, but the slider and the circle change... I mean, I haven't really I haven't really been able to see so far if the circle change is as deadly as it was in 16. I feel like it's not. Like, the first game I pitched with them, I just noticed that it's not really as deadly as it was in 16. Maybe they knew that. Maybe they, they caught on to that and just figured that it was too deadly of a pitch and they just toned it down a little bit. But look at Brantley, man. Dude, Brantley the last two games has been sketchy out there in left field. And you know for a fact... When that happens, something is going to be done. So Seager is up, and a couple pitches later, he is sending a two-run shot very, very deep. So this guy is back within one run. I can't, That is not Rodney's fault at all. Brandley couldn't make the easy play, and then he does get the two-run shot. So, all right, man, this guy is back within one run, but I still have the lead. Thank God Lofton can make the play out there in center field, and I'm still up by a run. So, yeah. Wasn't Rodney's fault, man. I was doing very good in this game with Rodney other than that home run so far. But still, Brandley has been a little bit sketchy in the last two games. Like the last game I played against TD, he also made an error on like the exact same thing. Weak little... Actually, the last three games, man, because the MVP game, I remember I was playing fuzzy and he hit a line drive right to uh, right to Brandley in left field and he couldn't make the play. But it went down as a base hit because it was kind of like a sinking liner, but he should have caught it. So, I don't know what's going on, man. Bradley has been a little bit sketchy out there in left field, but Rodney still dealing on the hill, man. That's like, it's like what, fourth? Fourth K of the game, I'm pretty sure. Only like the third inning uh, pitch so far. So, yeah, I'm going to have to try and go the distance with Rodney in this game without running out, of ener running out of energy because Wade Davis would be the only would be the only option pretty much because Billy Wagner is 100% gassed. And I think Soria is, actually Soria isn't gassed, he's like, he's around midway, but everyone else is legit in the, in the gutters, man. Everyone else is just dead in the pen. Everyone else's arm is just dangling off their shoulders right now, so I need Rodney to do, to do what he usually does, like what he was doing in 16, getting another guy looking right there. So Rodney's coming in, getting K's everywhere you look. Too bad he hit that two-run shot, man, because who knows? Even though Rodney was doing very good in this game, one swing of the bat could have tied this game up. 
So after like the second inning, I really didn't get that many... Uh, I didn't really get that much on the board, man. Even though I was continuing to do good against Syndergaard, uh, you know, I wasn't really getting any base... I wasn't getting much base hits, and I definitely wasn't getting any runs because, yeah, that, that's what usually happens, though, man. Usually when you get off to good starts, I feel like the game just tell, just pretty much tells you to settle down. We'll just be like, all right, that's enough out of you. It's your opponent's time to get some runs in. But this guy did put in Wade Davis uh, around the seventh inning, I'm pretty sure, so that was it for Syndergaard. Hanley isn't able to... Uh, send one deep or even find the grass in, outfield, in the outfield. So that is out number three in that inning. So Rodney is still in, man. This is the, uh, what is it, the eighth? I think this is the eighth inning. So Rodney is definitely getting the job done so far. So, yeah, man, still up by one run in this game. Weak little chopper to third base. Molitor makes the play out number two. So now Seager is back up. Hit that two-run shot earlier in this game, hoping he wouldn't do the same. I can't stand Seager. But I am able to get him to fly out to Brantley in left field for the final out of that inning. Thank God Brantley had a brain in his damn skull on that play. So I need some insurance, man, because one run leads going into the ninth inning is just terrible. I can't seem to hold the damn leads. So Willie Stargell already has two base hits on the day. That's his third, and that's a solo shot. So I needed that. No question about it, man. I needed that solo shot. Just needed to get one run no matter how I got it. So Stargell does something clutch yet again. So it seemed like Rodney was going to run out of juice in the ninth inning, but wanted to use him until he did. I honest to God wanted to leave Rodney in until his arm flew off his fucking body. Until he had no right arm, man. Until his arm went with the ball to home plate. So after that pitch, I mean, it seemed like I only had one pitch left. So I needed to try and get uh, Goldsmith to fly out or something for... There's only one strike, too. So I needed to get him to ground out, fly out or something for out number two. So that was it, man. That was it for Rodney. His energy was was gone. He had no energy left. He was definitely gassed. So Soria is in. And that may have been a good thing that I did that, man. Because you know this guy was probably, you know, he couldn't really read the curveball right off the bat when Soria was in. So I'm getting him swinging for the second out. Next guy coming to the plate is looking at the changeup down by the knees. And that is ending this one. The fat lady is doing what everyone knows she's doing out there in the nosebleeds. So... I mean, I think, yeah, I think Rodney did get the, yeah, he did get the win. Rodney did get the win in this game. He pitched very well. I mean, he probably would have got player of the game if, Star if Stargell wasn't just his typical self and got three base hits, one of them being that solo shot in the bottom of the ninth inning. So, yeah, man, Rodney went four and a third with how many strikes? Five strikeouts, so that's not too bad. Did give up two hits, one of them that two-run shot. But if Brantley made the play, that probably never would have even happened. But yeah, man, as always, guys, if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up. Definitely be on the lookout for that pack opening later tonight. It's going to be epic, and I will see everybody in the next video.